This week Epic Games announced Unreal Engine 5, the next big version of the most popular game and real-time rendering engine. And it's huge. Hi guys, my name is Borodante, and on this channel I draw, paint, sculpt, and talk about all kinds of digital art and computer graphics. Two key features Epic Games showcased in their demo were called Lumen and Nanite. The next level lighting and the next level geometry. Both of these technologies, while being very different, have one thing in common. They allow game developers avoid the most tedious part of their job, the never-ending manual optimization. Not completely, but this is a great step forward. Now, Lumen will take care of perfect lighting. It's a technology of getting the realistic global illumination without ray tracing? Question mark? It is discussed as like a fast alternative to the ray-traced global illumination, but I think there's a great chance it's a fusion of the two worlds, using a small amount of rays to define the direction and the colors, the brightness of the lighting, and then generating an automatic instant cube map to store all of that data. I'm just guessing, but it seems like a gist of it. It's pretty much storing the ray tracing data in like a 3D map to avoid repeating that ray tracing every single frame. It's a lot easier to compute, but comes with a trade-off of response time. You may notice in the demo the global illumination that reflected lighting actually moved slower and smoother comparing to the quick motion of the direct lighting. It looks like some sort of temporal multi frame sampling is taking place. So in a racing game, or like a new Spider-Man game, the camera would be moving a lot faster than that global illumination, so it wouldn't be able to keep up. Not sure, but still it's good enough, considering the performance gains and the fact that global illumination is pretty much like a secondary lighting. If there's one good place for temporal slow sampling, that would probably be global illumination. But yeah, that's Lumen, that's one technology, but I think a lot more interesting and a lot more exciting technology is actually Nanite. Nanite allows using in real-time rendering any amount of polygons. Pretty much there's no limit. Like, this is it. We reached it. We're there. Well, almost. There are some limitations to where that kind of infinite detail is possible, but more on that later. I actually want to mention another technology from a very different company that seems to have played a big role in the existence of Nanite technology. Thing is, the moment I saw the demo, I immediately remembered a YouTube video from 10 years ago made by a small developer's team called Euclidean. The technology they developed was called the the unlimited detail technology. It was a cool concept that used the render what you see approach. Meaning it doesn't matter how much millions of polygons or voxels there is in the scene, the system only cared about which exact polygons showed up inside of the pixels of the final image. So only working with what you see. We've made a little island. The island is one kilometer square. This island is made of 21 trillion, 62 billion, 352 million, 435,000 polygons. As far as I remember, the biggest deal, like the smartest part of all of it, was to figure out the best way to search the polygons that the pixel is looking at. So 10 years ago, Euclidean described their searching approach like somewhat of an adaptation of an internet search engine, a sophisticated way of googling the needed polygons. Whatever that means, it sounded really cool and outlandish. Also, that unlimited detail technology was working not with polygons, but with voxels. A completely different way of building 3D graphics. So instead of like a cardboard carcass approach of polygons, voxels are like three-dimensional pixels. Like Minecraft, but on an atomic level. The box is so tiny that they are smaller than one pixel, so everything looks absolutely different. Find. It was cool, but not very useful, considering that, well, it's easier to create models with polygons than with messy, mushy blob of atoms. In the graphics industry, everyone's used to using polygons, so we thought we'd build a polygon converter. 
By converting polygons to unlimited detail point cloud data, you can then run them in unlimited quantities. And later on, the team actually moved on with a cool holographic direction. They're now called Euclidean Holographics, and they actually build big holographic entertainment centers. Apparently very impressive. <laughs> Some cool holographic games and dinosaur zoos and all that kind of cool stuff. But back to the big money game companies. Last year, Nvidia presented their own version of infinite detail technology. They call it mesh shaders. Seems like pretty much the same technology, but instead of having to use voxels, we get to work directly with triangles. I don't know if Euclidean is involved in this, I really doubt that considering they were met sort of aggressively by the big gaming companies back in the day. That's why they sort of disappeared for many years and now reappeared with their own holographic thing. Euclidean is a little company in Australia of a few people who are really good friends and there's a few people who really, really don't like us. They were at the wrong place at the wrong time, apparently, when everyone was investing a lot of money into being able to render more and more polygons. These guys went, let's drop all that thing and switch to voxels. And it made everyone mad. I don't know what that means, but they say they did not have a good time. <laughs> When we showed this, thousands of websites and forums started arguing about whether this was real or not. A lot of top computer scientists said to everyone, we absolutely promise you this is not real. It was all a bit hard for us, so we decided we would just disappear and quietly keep working on what we'd started. In any case, this whole mesh shaders technology, Euclidean played a big role in its existence, at least in an inspirational way. The NVIDIA's approach is using clusterization of a given mesh into bounding boxes. So you break a multi-million polygon mesh into smaller like boxy areas, and then break those into even smaller sub boxes. Then you shoot a ray from your camera through the pixel of the final image you're trying to render and check what kind of bounding box that ray is intersecting. Then you get inside of that box and analyze further what sub box of that smaller box is being intersected. And then inside of that box, well, pretty much you get several iterations of super simple operation. And in the end, you get to work with a handful of polygons to actually render the pixel. A very smart and cool way to optimize this kind of thing. I also want to mention that NVIDIA's mesh shaders technology has much more to it than just this. NVIDIA made the biggest deal out of the automatic LOD system, where all the objects get decimated and become less detailed at a big distance, so the system wouldn't have to deal with a huge amount of polygons that are smaller than one pixel. But on top of that, even though there's a lot of intense decimation going on, we still get an unprecedented amount of polygons per frame. And that, I think, is possible thanks to that bounding box search technology. Okay, moving on. And actually sounds a lot like path tracing applied to sampling a mesh. Shooting a ray, checking what it hits, instead of going with the full mesh buildup and then projecting it on the image, you go from the camera shooting rays. That's path tracing. I guess that's why the whole mesh shaders is an RTX technology. So, now this technology is actually applied in Unreal Engine. Remember we mentioned high poly assets? This statue was imported directly from ZBrush and is more than 33 million triangles. No baking of normal maps, no authored LODs. I don't know if it's like exactly using it, or is this like an alternative version of it made by Epic Games? I think the latter is more realistic considering it probably will work perfectly fine without RTX, but will work a lot faster with it. But how cool is that? Imagine any indie developer can use this and have amazing level of detail, perfectly processed by the engine without the need of creating like lower resolution versions of the same object every time. You know, the technique 
technique used in every game ever. When you're approaching any object, you can kind of see how it's changing into a more and more detailed version of itself in a very choppy fashion. That optimization is just out of the question here by design. You just use one super high detailed model and it's never actually fully loaded in memory, yet it actually gets to be fully visualized at any distance. How cool is that? A trade-off of this approach? Well, not really a trade-off, but a limitation that I mentioned earlier. You notice how all the demos, be it the mesh shaders or the nanites, they all use like rocks, statues, caves, all kinds of static objects. Yeah, they can fly around, fall and break into smaller pieces, but there's never any characters or foliage that would be swinging in the wind or liquids, whatever soft bodies. Because to actually animate geometry that has its polygons actually changing the shape, like a soft object or a character's neck or a smile. Any of that requires processing all of the data of the very complex mesh. And that's literally what nanites avoid doing. So yeah, only static objects can be optimized like that. If you're seeing an animated character in the distance, that character will be optimized the old way with the choppy loading of a more and more detailed versions as you approach them. But anyway, even though it's interesting and very useful to know the way the technology works and where it falls short, it's still mind-blowing how awesome games can get very soon. All of a sudden, a completely realistic CGI in real-time game engine seems to be a lot closer than it was yesterday. So yeah, I think it's a much smarter move to invest into upgrading in that kind of direction instead of going 4K 240Hz. Soon, I'm gonna make a very angry video on that subject. 